you been waiting for this one? It's chance, uh, a chance for redemption? Personally, no. It's a, it's a game of football we need to win. We had a disappointing result last week and, uh, you know, we uh, want to stay in touch with the top two. So uh, we're at home and, uh, yeah, we want to do well. Try all right back in? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, we've got to train this morning, obviously, but uh, he trained uh, fully, no problem. Uh, you know, he, he was close last week. We just probably took a little bit of a conservative approach with him and, uh, you know, he feels really good this week, so he'll be right. Milligan back in at, uh, in that midfield role? Yeah, yeah, well, Millsy and uh, Archie are back, and uh, yeah, again, they trained yesterday and uh, trained this morning, but they'll be back in there. Does this game mean any more to you than any other game at all? No, no, it's, it's another game uh, where we need to win, and every game, uh, particularly in this league, as you've seen, uh, being so tight, uh, every three points is pretty crucial. Um, look, it's Brisbane, and, and, and uh, as I said previously, uh, had some great uh, times up there and had uh, you know, some great associations with uh, some of the people involved in that club and uh, that doesn't change but uh, you know, come game day you, you kind of focus on getting a result. Was there a bit of soul searching after the loss in Adelaide last week, uh, Ange? 4-2, four goals in a half hour period. No, no soul searching. Like I said, after the game we, uh, we actually played quite well when we had the ball, we didn't play well when we didn't have it and uh, as I said I take responsibility for that. I probably didn't get the the team selection right and, and uh, you know we paid a price for it but uh, I couldn't fault the players effort and look we're, we're a team that's going to try and win every game of football so regardless of whether we're undermanned we're home or away or the opponent we'll try and win and when you do that when your intent's always to win and not minimise uh, damage then uh, if you don't play well you're going to get punished and, and we did and uh, and I guess uh, you know rightly so. You guys believe the international boys will last 90 minutes? I see no reason why they wouldn't. They've played three or four games in seven days, so I reckon 90 minutes. Uh, hopefully they last more than that, yeah. Three changes, so who's out? Uh, Brew, Naboo, uh, Gallagher, is that fair enough? Just we'll have a look at it this morning. Like I said, we'll, uh, we'll make some decisions this morning, but uh, those three will come in, yeah. I mean, uh, and then we'll, I mean, we obviously still got some decisions to make defensively, and once we make that, we'll, we'll have a look. But uh, Archie will come in in place of Andrew, yeah. I mean, young Andrew's done well, but he's, yeah, as we said all along, he's uh, he's nowhere near being able to play 90 minutes, but he's done a fantastic job for us the uh, last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, but he's getting closer and closer. He's still scoring goals and uh, a fantastic option for us. And I think, uh, you know, coming off the bench, um, you know, I think he can prove a handful against anyone. So uh, we'll look to do that with him. I think Archie said yesterday that he probably would be battling a little bit of fatigue. So how do you manage him? I mean, is it... Yeah, I think that's a starchy... Uh, Make an excuse for training poorly yesterday, to be honest. But uh, just have a look at him now. He's running around like a two-year-old, as he always does, so he'll be fine. Things have swung around so much since that round two game. Do you still rate the ball? Oh, most definitely. I rate every team in the comp. And, uh, you know, if you watched them last week, um, you know, they they did everything they could to win that game, and, and it didn't didn't happen. It was a pretty fine line between win and loss. and. Uh, if they get, if you give them those three points, they're what they're fourth or fifth. So it's just that kind of competition, and uh, they've got still got quality individuals in their team. And you know, I've watched all their games, and, and apart from maybe Melbourne Heart here, they've been in every one of those games. Um, so you know, you don't you don't ride them off, but you don't ride anyone off in this league. How much how much has your team improved since that round two drubbing? Well, you know, we were coming off a pretty low base. Um, first couple of games were very poor, so uh, you know, we have improved since then, but. Uh, you know, we needed to, and uh, yeah, I don't think the first two games were a reflection of where we were at. I just, uh, for some reason or another, we, you know, the, 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 the start of the competition uh, almost took us by surprise, and uh, maybe things were going too smoothly before then. But, you know, we, we've been good since then. Uh, we've been pretty consistent. Um, even last week, as I said, we, we got punished for, for some poor defensive play, but uh, with the ball, we were still as threatening as ever, and, and uh, you know, we still scored a couple of goals. So, you know, since round two, we've been pretty consistent. The ATO is uh, targeting Nathan Tinkler's um, sporting interests. How do you react to that news? ATO is well above my station, to be quite brutally honest. So uh, I, I assume FFA's got all that under control. And, uh, you know, um, I think uh, in the planning of Newcastle for this year, I'm sure all these things have been put in place to ensure that uh, the competition and Newcastle go on. They've been fantastic, Newcastle. They've got some great crowds this year. and. Uh, local communities behind that football club so uh, as I said uh, 
I won't be remarking on the ATO for personal reasons as well, but uh, <laughs> um, I think Newcastle will be here for good. So you're not concerned about what it might mean Absolutely for the sport? Absolutely zero. Yeah. And the Raw fans weren't too friendly to you in round two. What can you expect from them this time around? Oh, I don't say that they weren't too friendly. Some of them weren't, um, but they probably took their cue from the club. So, you know, that's the message the club wanted to send out. And I think uh, some supporters took that on board. Uh, some supporters were great to me um, before the game and they supported their team during the game. So I guess the beauty for me, there'll be uh, 20 odd thousand who, uh, you know, will be behind me this week. So that's uh, it's great here at Amy and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a great part of being a Melbourne Victory coach, I guess. Uh, you get a fair bit of support at your home ground. I sense you weren't too happy with that message you're talking about that was sent to the fans. I said at the time, and I mean, look, we've all moved on, I've moved on, but that was my first game back at a ground where I'd had some great memories. Now, you know, there was a couple of ways they could have uh, addressed that as a football club, and they chose to uh, try and sell some more tickets. So, there you go. What's your view on the A-League All-Star concept? It's an interesting one. I mean, obviously, uh, it's proven popular. I mean, you know, Man United, I think it, I think it's great that they're coming out, and I think the timing when they're coming out is great. I've never been a fan of friendly games at the end of seasons for, for European clubs, but, you know, they're coming here July 20th. You know, the Premier League starts just after that, so they'll take it seriously, and, and uh, it'll be a cracking game. And, uh, yeah, maybe it's good um, that the crowd are picking this one. I, I know... If, if I was coaching that team and it wasn't doing well, I'd be turning around to the crowd and giving them a bit for picking the side. So I get that on a weekly basis. So that'll be interesting. But uh, yeah, look, uh, as I said, it seems to be popular with the fans. So why not? You keen to coach the side? Oh, look, mate, I'm uh, I'm keen to coach uh, this side to be successful. That's that's where uh, my ambitions always lay is in the job I've got. Uh, like I said, it would be a unique exercise to do that. Um, you know, and. Uh, but uh, I've coached against Man U before, mate, so uh, maybe it's time to give somebody else a go. <laughs> you haven't been approached, have you? By Man U? No. no, no. <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even realise it was on until this week. Uh, I mean, I, I, uh, obviously it's been in the planning for a while, so uh, like I said, it's gonna be, it looks like it's going to be a sellout, and, and I think it's an absolute perfect time to watch Man United because, as I said, it's on the cusp of a, another Premier League season, and they'll take that seriously, so... Um, I'll, uh, uh, if not involved, I'll be a very interested observer because I think it'll be a cracking game. Have Melbourne Victory fans seen glimpses of this team play its best football this season, or do you still think you're a long way off that? I think, I think, pro yeah, I mean, you're probably right, probably in glimpses. Um, I think uh, we're sort of laying the foundations of the team we want to be, and, and that is, you know, a very attacking team that, that's going to be intent on, on trying to win games every week. And, uh, you know, for a team that hasn't really been successful, you know, consistent in our in our general play, we're, we're very threatening every week, um, and I think there's some good signs there. So if we can put it all together, uh, medium to long term, I think um, you know we'll be an exciting team, and I think a team that uh, you know supporters will be um, you know uh, excited to watch it on a week in week out basis.